Contagious, it's Miss Solomon, and I'm going to read to you a chapter from The Year of the Panda, chapter four. Louie's mother stared. What are we going to do with it? Then she put her hand out and touched the little animal in her son's arms. As soon as she did that, Lu Yi knew everything would be all right. I'll take care of it, he said. I took care of the sick baby goat. Remember, I can do it. You know that, mother. It was true. He was good with the animals. Over Lu Yi's head, his mother and father nodded silently. This doesn't mean you can forget about your other tasks and your study. No, 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 I'll do it all. It was Louis's task to help care for the animals. Every day he milked the two female goats, Nim and Lee. He made sure Bim and Bam, the two oxen had fed, had feed. He checked to see if they had sores on their shoulders from the yoke. If so, he would rub it with ointment. He threw corn to the chickens and he cleaned out the courtyard where the animals stayed at night. Lu Yi looked down. How hard could it be to take care of this little thing? I, I can't imagine having all the chores he has already. Now taking care of a baby panda. Mother, could I have some milk? His mother gave him a small bowl of milk. Lu Yi sat with the little Daxing Mao in his lap. He tipped the bowl toward the animal's mouth, but the milk dribbled down its jaw. He used to, he's used to drinking from his mother. The little dowsing ma lay back without moving. Maybe he's not hungry. Meantime, in the courtyard, the other animals were restless. The chickens were squawking. Nim and Lee bleated a few times. You know, the other animals need your attention too, Lu Yi's father said. I'm taking some of this wood to old mother Ting. He passed through the courtyard and walked off. Lu Yi put the little dowsing ma down on a pile of hay and went about his other tasks. It was while he was milking Nim that he got his idea. Now, Nim, he stroked the goat's neck. You would not mind, would you? He picked up the baby dousing mouth and put its mouth on the goat's nipple. He gave a little squeeze. Some milk squirted into the baby's mouth. It's like an adoptive parent. It has forgotten how to suck. Louis's mother was standing there. He had not heard her come back out to the courtyard. Squeeze again, son. With a series of little squeezes, he fed the infant dousing mouth till it seemed to have enough. He laid it down in the corner on some straw and went about his other tasks. He finished later than usual, and he still had to do some school lessons. He was yawning and writing when excited Ho Yan st stuck his head in the door. I heard! Where is it? Lu Yi helped his pad up. The little animal lay curled underneath in his lap. Let me hold him! Without waiting for an answer, Ho Yan lifted the little animal, which promptly began squealing and squirming. Oh my goodness, look how cute. How would you feel if your friend grabbed it away from you? Ho Yan raised it high in the air. It squeaked louder. I do that with my brother Wang's baby. She likes it. Put him down. This is not Wang's baby. You're scaring him. Ho Yan squatted close to his friend and put the little animal on the ground. Funny, it doesn't look like a dowsing mouth. It looks more like a little pig. Ho Yan hopped up. I have to go help my mother. Lu Yi went back to his lessons, but somehow his mind was not on them. Where he wondered, would the dowsing mouth sleep? He finally placed it on a pile of hay in the corner of the courtyard. But just then his father came in with the oxen. This is not a good place, thought Lu Yi. He'll be crushed by the other animals. So the first night, the baby dowsing mouse slept with Lu Yi, curled up close to his chest. The little animal liked the warmth of Lu Yi's body. It pushed up close to him. Lu Yi kept waking up. Hairs were tickling his chest. Then his mat became wet. Oh, gross, what happened? Here's a little picture of the panda sleeping. Okay. His mother saw his mat out airing. She knew why right away. Maybe he can sleep in the basket, she said. He likes to be close to me. You're taking the place of his mother. Hmm. Lu Yi led Bim and Bam out. He held the two oxen as his father put on the yoke. Then he fed the little dowsing mouth again, holding it up to the goat's nipple and squeezing gently. 
days, the baby dowsing mouse seemed content to rest in the basket. When Luyi came home from school, he would take it out with him. His mother had fashioned a little sling out of an old pair of pants. When Luyi went to bring the goats in, the baby dowsing mouse rode in the sling, peering out over Luyi's shoulder. It is like his little baby. As weeks followed week, the baby dowsing mouse thrived. Luyi noticed it was getting quite heavy to carry in the sling. There, he set the animal down. I think I'm going to give you a name. I'll call you Su Lin. Lu Yi's father was nearby. I don't think it's a good idea to give it a name. Why, father? All the other animals have names except the chickens. We can't keep feeding a wild animal, said his father. We feed the others. The others work for us. We could not live without them. This is a wild animal. We can't keep it for long for many reasons. Lu Yi's father put a hand on his son's shoulder. When you name a creature, you and it then have a connection. It will be harder for you later on. Louis picked up the little animal and put it on his lap. I'm connected to you already, he thought. What do you mean later on? Son, you didn't think you could keep Su Lin forever. He will grow to be strong and a fierce animal. Where can he go, Louis? could barely get the words out. I have spoken to the barge man. He has agreed to take him to Jinan. There is a zoo there. We can't wait long. He is getting too big. When? I think you should start making the cage now. And that is the end of chapter four. Tomorrow we will read chapter five. I hope you enjoyed today's Read Aloud. Bye guys. <coughs>